Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saika and we're playing Legendary Iron Man difficulty. And uh, this is episode number three of uh, mm, Freeing South Africa. So far we've done pretty well. 28 enemies are gone. We're fighting against the Warlock and potentially another um, ruler. And it is time for us to move up to this line here carefully. Oh, nice. Just a tiny pack. That is helpful. Kill confirmed. The owners created them for this very purpose. In their respect, they are fulfilled. Well, damn it. Let's get rid of both of them. Perfect. So we're at 30 enemies, which means around 8 enemies are left, plus uh, the Warlock. Sounds pretty much like one massive pack and the Warlock to me. 8 enemies are always suspicious. It could be a rainbow pack, um, which is a, which would be a typical pack for uh, for the actual leader. Like rainbow pack meaning eight advents of different occupations, like one of each. On so, like I said, we're carefully advancing. And soon, zombies should appear. I think it was like two rounds after the last time. There we go. Predictable, but with that many overwatch shots, we might as well be fine. Of course, only if we actually hit the overwatch shots. Yeah, might as well not overwatch at all. Well, let's be fair, that was disgustingly bad. Copy that. It feels that something is not okay with Overwatch. Like, it should be as if they would be firing into a half cover. But for some reason, they miss so often. Good. We're not advancing any further. Let's just make sure we're having things under control. Are you sh me? What? All right. That's the opposite of advancing care for the psychic. That is the polar opposite of advancing carefully. Roger that. All right, we're we will need to take a couple of more drastic measures.
Good. That'll at least solidify our position up here. Good, I think we would want... Wait a second, could we hack the tower? No, we've already hacked it. Well, never mind. Alright, moving down here, which is still in full cover. And apparently we can't see anything, although the target uh, display has told us that we could. Great. Now we should rather get into cover. Unfortunately, we can't hit anything on a lower level, so we won't be able to just reload, which essentially means our next turn with him is gone. Let's see if we can kill the tower. The answer is we barely can't. I definitely got that one. Good. We can move down here, which we're going to do. I'm going. I want to use uh, the troops downstairs for a couple of flanking. Abilities and if one of them are is charging in We should be fine with Bladestorm and Overwatch I'm up. Still up. Uh, Excuse me What? They are still... Wow. Okay, that's even... That's even... From my experience, a pretty... Bullshit attack. So they are simply um, ignoring line of sight. And, in, uh, and instead begin to attack through the wall. Mind you, there's no window there. We're just standing in full cover. So they didn't even bother to open. And also, the guy downstairs here throws a grenade through the actual building, through the uh, very ceiling here. So that it broke the ceiling without having line of sight. There's just so much bullshittery going on in just one single round. It is almost unbelievable. I mean, what the actual fuck? I'm sorry, this is that's just pure bullshit. There are two stun lances here and here. And normally I'm a, I'll just take it with a grain of salt, but how does the game dare to do so much bullshit in just one round. This is unacceptable even for standards of XCOM. Holy shit. Tch. 
Okay, I need to think about how we're dealing with that. Let's see if we have line of sight if we are grappling over here. The answer is no. But I mean, we could put a really large kill zone in place. So we could grab it up to here and probably take a different position. The question is, is that worth it? On my way. Not sure where the enemy captain is. I think he's somewhere down there. Well, by the way, this guy moved up to here, so that would have normally triggered an attack. But yeah, that seems to be not the case when we are doing it. So we could attack him once and get some. Could also move over here and essentially get two blade storm attacks. Only 50-50 into full cover. We have unfortunately no real full cover ourselves. But this here gives us a flanking position. On the Sun Lancer. That's a crit, that's good. Can drop down here. We're not going to be flanked, but we can kill the Sun Lancer. X ray neutralized. Ah, the boss is here. I can see it. This field is blocked as well. Gotta get rid of uh, the shield bearer. Could grab it all the way down to here, which would give us a few targets for next round to take care of. Move up to here, but how far can we actually move? Eh, not too far, so we couldn't like get all the way up to here. Probably best uh, the best play is to keep this position here and steady our weapon.
I mean, don't want to be flanked. This here seems like a pretty solid position and we can hit both of them. Yep, there's the boss. Fortify. Let's get rid of the Heavy Lancer. Shit. Unlucky. Lancer could essentially go wherever he desires to. This guy is going to be dead next turn if we continue to stay here. How could we reach the stun lancer and still kill him is the question. Definitely can flashbang them. It's an option to deal with them, I guess. No one is too massively injured. I guess the flashbang is actually the best idea here. Yeah, let's just kill this guy. We don't have a good other action that we could take. Impact field, maybe, to reduce the damage. But not by much. So we want to be efficient with our actions, so we're reloading. Oh, that was a free reload, okay. Good to know. Yeah, still, I think that here is by far the most efficient action. And we do have a good position on top here. Can't disorient uh, the boss. Rec time is in half cover, we don't want that to continue, so we're giving him full cover. And yeah, that's pretty much it. At least our uh, kill zone seems to be working. That should have been a kill zone shot as well. We have the better position overall, so no need to back up. Not good, not good at all. Most certainly we need to get out of uh, his range. Good, let's top up our soldiers. I 
I like the idea of hitting him. I would like the idea of critting him even more, but that's not going to happen. So instead, let's kill the trooper. Steady our weapon. Okay, before we take any shots here. That's a good one. I like it. What's our equipment? Do we have a mine shield? Oh, yeah, we can only see his abilities, but not his loadout. That's actually, by the way, something that I wish they would have implemented as well. You can only see the weapon, but not the loadout. Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, we, that's a good position to, f uh, to flank and shred, but comes at the expense of being able to actually um, fight on this side. We, we can't let that happen. Okay, do we have... No, we don't have an option to trigger his overwatch shot. Too bad. The Chosen definitely makes the situation way worse. Without him, we would have the superior position. I feel with him, we have a pretty bad position. Because we don't want to be in his vision range at all. We need to also take care of the five armor, but we probably need to take care of those guys first. <sighs> Can't risk to be mind controlled so the position here is already good because even if he were was to move to here he can't see us which is great Gotta deal with those clowns here. I mean, this position would actually be decent if it wasn't for those two guys that could flank us. Gotta get rid of the armor. Hmm. I think we need to reposition here, close the door afterwards so that we're only taking shots. And then next turn, move up to here and flank plus shred him. Eh, 
I don't want to do that. It's really no good play. There are only bad options, which I applaud the enemy for uh, creating a situation like that. Let's start taking some of these bad options. Fortunately, a grazed shot. Reloading. I know that I said I wanted to go to here, but our odds to hit are too bad. Still Unfortunately, not a hit. Okay, so that'll trigger Overwatch. Let's see, at least we'll shred him. Good. We can't risk Poppy to be mind controlled. Just can't. This position here would be too dangerous because we don't want we don't want another uh, flanked position. This here is somewhat doable. Still with a smoke, uh, pretty decent position overall. Plus we're flanking. Let's use precision shot to have a chance of critting. Really nice hit, I like it, but unfortunately not enough damage. Could move all the way up to here, but that would be incredibly dangerous and very reckless. What's our chance to stun anyone? 26%. That's a really bad chance. Too bad he's stunned because we could have used it to our advantage. Thirty-two percent. I think it's not going to become much better than that. And we're going to Overwatch. So there uh, will still be the attempt to mind control. Luckily, the only soldier that he can see is someone who has a mind shield. We can next turn position ourselves over here and start actually getting him down. There is the mind control I was talking about. Ok, 
Okay, it's getting close, but I think we can manage it. Time to kill the shield bearer. Come on. Good job. Reloading. I mean, we could also go up to here. His mind control is now on cooldown, but probably not yet. I think we're taking this position here, although it's not a flanking position, because with run and gun we can we can rapid fire him. And since the reload, we didn't have any free reloads left over. Now yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's okay, it's not as good as if we would be flanking him, but it's not bad either. Good, we would be immune to the fire. Moving to here would be pretty risky, but I think we can pull it off. The Warlock is not going to take a shot at us, and we do have eight protocols, so it's fine. What I need to do is I definitely need to shred him. That's why I'm playing so aggressive. Very nice. Let's try to kill this guy. Successful. Good job. Wow. Worst potential outcome. I think it's going to be enough to wiggle him down. Still difficult to hit. Pretty, pretty difficult to hit. So, that's probably not going to kill him, but still. That armor's tough. All right, back time. Takes the A protocol. Uh, 
And we're moving forward. Next turn, we can start going for the Warlock. There's the Bladestorm. Shit, we missed. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Luckily, we're immune to fire, so the purifier really doesn't do much. Right. Good. Time to finish this fool. Finally a good position. So, not a good uh, chance to hit him, but what we can do is suppress him and get rid of his overwatch. Pretty sure he's going to summon something very soon. And or mind control. But there is not much that I can do against the mind control. Wait a second, was he immune to melee? No, he wasn't. But we also don't just want to run in. We can do that next turn. Good. Slowly but surely. Let's wiggle him up. Moving up, we have a long way to go with our sniper. Got it. He's immune to Overwatch, but not the creatures that he's summoning. And I don't want to take a 38% shot. There's the summoning I was suspecting would happen. And there's uh, the legendary mind patrol. Which hits again thanks to mind shield. It's nothing. Good, we got to deal with him, but we also got to deal with the other threats here. Fortifying our position. And let's clear the battlefield.
we are giving our melee in a protocol. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Unfortunately not. Moving up to hopefully flank him soon. Not even a 50 50. Yeah, we do have bad odds against the full cover. Forty percent chance to take this guy out. I'll get him next time. Yeah, the problem is there is really no good alternative. Rock and roll. Reloading. Everyone's in full cover, so that's fine. Problem is the enemies are also in full cover. Gosh, and we're missing one 60% shot after the other. 37%, that is horrible. Let's see if we can kill this guy here. I don't want to suppress him. I think it's not worth the time. And loaded. Although on the other hand, what are we looking at? 40%? And Let's suppress him. So that will let us uh, end in the open, but we do have a protocol. Unfortunately, Mike Tango, our gunner, doesn't have ready for anything, otherwise he could have taken a shot. Okay, revive. Another revive. Your efforts at rectifying past mistakes will garner no praise from me. This here is still half cover and unless he starts to reposition. But we do have 16 hit points, even a crit wouldn't kill us. And I don't want him to extract information out of either of these guys. Let's see if the disoriented uh, people can do something. Probably it's better to just steady the weapon for our snipers. But they can't do that because they're disoriented, so fuck it. Might as well take the shots. Way. 
All right, we're closing in. On our way. It's time to kill all of them. By the way, great loot. Every single one of them had loot so far. Fortify. Move up and shred him. Very nice. Moving up. Get it together. I had expected nothing less than failure. Okay, so fifty five percent chance to hit him. I think that's not too bad. Reloading. I wish we would have a rapid shot. Chain shot is too dangerous. We need to take a normal one. There's the last shredding. Thirty hit points. Time to get impact field. And now he's most likely going to move. Just going to trigger Blade Storm. Oh no, he doesn't trigger Overwatch. I forgot about that. Hmm. Spectral Army is his last resort. He's trying to desperately survive. But that's not going to save him. Or is it? We're grabbing the loot. Next turn we can move in and just rapid shot kill him. Not even sure where his spectral army is, to be honest. Done. Is it an invisible spectral army? What? What is he doing? Spectral army normally is supposed to summon a couple of, yeah, spectral enemies such as spectral stun lance and so on. But I'm seeing none. Position confirmed. Let's rock. Double time. Overwatch. On Overwatch. We're going to go. Reload Overwatch. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, theoretically we should see enemies. Well, I mean, that's interesting, uh, how and where he summoned them. Well, one thing is clear, this mission here had a lot of bugs. 
We're now seeing Spectral Army being created somewhere, but not where it's supposed to be. Very strange. Break time, reloads. Luckily, he has not been disoriented. And that takes care of his spectral army. Now, it's time to slash him. Finishing him with a classic in this run. An absolute classic, also known as Shotgun to the Face. There we go. <laughs> nice. Well, well, well. Positive confirmation. Area secured. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Okay, well, I mean, these, despite the fact that we just killed 70 enemies, I gotta be honest, I got mildly annoyed about the bucks uh, this time. Just the complete ignorance of, um, of walls and, and summoning stuff somewhere. That's, that's just bullshit. And we are done with yet another liberation, so that's the good part about it. This just goes to show that the chosen are vulnerable, we can take them down. Nice. Okay, so as for Taxman, Death from Above is good, Center Mass is good, Lone Wolf is good. Set of precise shot, low profile is great. I like the bring it on. Uh, part probably aggression instead of that I arguably for the extra crit chance um, that's the only thing that I uh, regret it's not the end of the world but for Kubikiri to work later we might need aggression and this kind of time we're going for Alpha uh, Mike Foxtrot because the sniper will just hit so much harder Mike Bravo, uh, definitely rapid fire. We can get rid of chain shot and instead go for demolition. Sean Shonigans, I like Untouchable. It's probably my go to ability. I mean, we already have close and personal, so we don't need to bring it on. But Untouchable is just so strong. I love it. That isn't bad either, but I don't want to spend XCOM ability points for him. Smoker is a very solid ability and light him up is also good. So I think we're just going to save for light him up. Uh, that's a bit redundant, uh, traverse fire and light him up. I think with light him up, he will do just fine. Good, in terms of our Shinobi here, Reaper, definitely a great ability evasive, not bad. So yeah, we're going for Reaper. And Formidable is great, two additional uh, protection. Also less uh, damage from explosives. Formidable is just 
all around a good skill for survivability. So there is no reason not to take it. In combat fitness is something that he'll take later. So really good abilities there. And look at that, Divat also got his uh, promotion. Very similar skill uh, skill set. Uh, again, I would probably think that aggression is a bit better. So yeah, arguably that could be a thing. Alpha Mike Foxtrot. And we got Combat Fitness here for extra aim, mobility, hit points, will and dodge. It'll only cost us one XCOM ability point, so we're going to do that. Um, since he's also a Master Sergeant now. Man oh man, Divot, you have a great character. Like Combat Fitness is as, as an extra ability. Just, yes, you can get it over a longer uh, period of time, but for aim, one mobility, two hit points, four will, four dodge. Nothing to sneeze at, that's like what, six, seven covert ops missions in uh, wrapped around in, in one talent. It's not bad. A lot of survivability and aim definitely is super useful as well. So pretty happy with how the snipers turned out. They were incredibly strong on the mission. Just the amount of damage that they dealt. And with four additional points of base damage, we're looking at a minimum damage of 11 with the snipers. So that's great. That is just awesome. Advanced speed, great conditioning, so many great uh, things. Good. Let's take a look at our map, guys. Let's take a look. I am excited, but only for the Avatar project. Look at that, even more. The game is giving us treats now. So yeah, we can continue recruiting. Let's do that until we have 12 um, recruits. And then we're switching to sweet, sweet supplies. And that would mean another area with 450-ish supplies. So we are... <sighs> We are very set for once. Might as well, once the recruiting is over here, start the, infel, uh, the intel gathering and then use South America as our next as our next option. Or we're doing the intel here, which is kind of keeping it more or less low to not get strength, a strength of eight or higher and essentially start liberating these two areas next. Look at that! Resistance personnel, the rookie, resistance personnel. That's six days, which is good. How much resistance personnel do we have? Oh yeah, well, we could actually use that. A lot of extraction missions, which is cool. Let me find a team. Yeah, I just found out we might want to wait only uh, 18 more hours until the training is done, then we can go in with a low level team. Uh, which is not even going to be a problem. So let's gather some more alien alloys and delirium. We're getting a lot of them at the moment, which is great. And we got uh, supplies. So I'm ready to get some better equipment. Boy, oh boy, am I ready to get some better equipment. Some more intel. One day, 13 hours. Probably not going to happen. So we're going to skip on that mission. There we go. Uh, that is pretty much what we were looking for. How long does the officer training take? So we still got da -da 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 -dum. two more hours until we get 
the tr uh, shinobi training done. And then we're ready to board the mission. Good. Time to go on to the mission of Furious Heat. Let me get a team. All right, after a big bit back and forth, we got a newbie team uh, going. Ripper, um, our Shinobi is going to lead it. We got Shinobi for uh, for scouting in melee. We got kind of two uh, midfield characters. Uh, this um, technician will play a little bit further to the front. So we wanted to try different builds. In this case, we're having a technician who's more heavily reliant on his uh, gauntlet. So he's also carrying a shotgun. And on the other hand, we're probably going to have more kind of a midfield uh, sort of ranger whom I want to spec more into the um, into the um, advanced arc thrower, so arc thrower tree. And we got a sharpshooter. Should be enough to kill seven to nine enemies and get a couple of rookies plus resistance personnel. So here we go. Sky Ranger deployed. There we go. Let's continue scanning for Elarium. And boy, boy, we do have a lot of missions uh, queued up again. I am considering, since we're at 10 here, to actually start with Intel. We got enough soldiers to support it. Question is, do we also have, wait a second, come on. So question is, do we uh, do we also have a scientist? Laboratory. No, everyone's in the lab, but we need we could use another scientist for sure. I think this is what we're going to get down here. Must launch or abort, and that is for an engineer. Uh, we certainly don't. We don't want to go with only such a small team into all of the enemies. So we're going to boost the infiltration to 100%. And then it's time for uh, Dr. Juan Carlos Santiago, um, whom we're going to free from Chile. Well, that sounds like a great idea. Let's take a look before we end the mission onto our roster. That some of our top soldiers need to really uh, wait for a second. Got a lot of tired and wounded soldiers, so probably six to ten more days until we can uh, use them again. But we got quite a few promotions actually out of it. Uh, got a lot of master sergeants, so we are ready for some more difficult missions. That's for sure. One of the things that we still need to do is we have not started uh, training again. Um, so, Edgar Alien Poe. Fire discipline, all allies within command range get 10% to hits on reaction fire, which is great, but unfortunately our reaction shots really suck. And soldiers within command range receive plus five to defense value provided by cover. That's actually pretty damn good because he's always sort of in the back. 
and yeah, I think we're going we're going with the defense. Lovely. So that's Edgar Allan Poe. Who else uh, could be in there? Quick feet could start his training. Having another specialist definitely would help. Uh, Dragonova has trained quite a bit, so we can simply continue to let her train. I like the lead by example. I like the lead by example because she does have a really decent aim. And it's going to be aim, will, and hack. Not that I care too much about hack, but um, the aim is okay. Could be better, but it's okay. The willpower, so and so. So, hmm. Since we're. I mean, if we were to train her, then that would definitely be a good trade, right? Yeah, we're probably going with Collector for her. The intel isn't too bad. Uh, on the other hand, we have enough intel, so... Even if it's just a small bonus, lead by example is a passive is a passive bonus uh, that is definitely positive, and it's a passive bonus to everyone. So, might as well use it. Good guys, that brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, mission. I appreciate it as always your support. If you like what you have seen, specifically how we liberated Africa, yeeha! We got our first continent liberated. Then smash that like button and leave a comment down below see you so much uh, thank you so much and see you in the next run bye bye